because I, I I want to learn uh, something about theater in the classes. Okay, so thank you very much, everybody. Uh, I give now the floor to Mr. Kamsis to present with his uh, presentation. Thank you very much, Costa. Um, uh, do I have the screen? Yes, you can. Okay. And... Uh -oh. yeah. uh, do, post to can me chat participant. Uh, share screen to press no could be. Yeah. Ah, okay. Ε, Κώστα, εγώ δεν είμαι στο δωμάτιο. Η Παντελίδου Βικτωρία είμαι. Πώς θα πω. Δεν, δεν, το, δεν είμαι στο δωμάτιο τώρα. Α, είμαστε γενικά. Έτσι, δεν <laughs> ναι, 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 τώρα δεν είμαστε. Κώστα, το βλέπουμε το... Α... Ναι, ναι, το βλέπουμε, το βλέπουμε. Το βλέπουμε, ναι, ναι, ναι. ναι. ναι, ναι. Ε, πες μου κάτι... Ναι, πολύ καλά. Ε, ναι. Ε, αλλάζει. Ναι, ναι. No. Okay. Okay, let's begin. Uh, well, I I think from the beginning that there are many things that you already know uh, from your experience. We do need to mention them, though, so we can adequately support the methodology uh, we are proposing. Uh, so, art and science. What is the relationship between these two at the first glance? Is there a relationship or no? Can they work together for the benefit of uh, education, for the benefit of students and teachers? Can art enrich the educational process and give different new extension to the experience of knowledge? We will see that. The relationship between art and science. Uh, the relationship between the arts and especially the theater and STEM courses is not, is not new, is not unique. We are reminding you the mechanism uh, in the ancient Greek uh, theater, the machines of Leonardo da Vinci and many, many more uh, through many eras. There, I uh, have been many efforts to connect art and education to put more creativity, more imagination and innovation in the process of training, in the process of uh, teaching. In theater, we use many systems that belong to the mechanism of electricity, of electronics. And in the last uh, 20, 25 years, maybe more, the new computer technologies. Now is the time for the theater to return the gains we get from STEM and then reach the theater and art classes, especially in secondary school. Theater and education. It has been shown that the theater and its techniques can be very useful functional and applicable to education. There are many techniques in the elementary school uh, courses. I can remind you the drama in education, creative learning, role playing, and many, many more that we mention in our, uh, uh, in our website. I will present it to you in a while. It has also been proved that theatrical techniques are very effective for team building in the classroom among the, student, uh, the students and among the teacher and the students. I suspect that applying uh, theater techniques to secondary school uh, is uh, a little more, a little bit more difficult than in elementary school where children are very much into the mood of, uh, of, of play. The process is probably more difficult, but uh, I insist on this. I think that for this reason, much more interesting. The benefits. 
in addition, theater develops skills useful in their lives. Critical thinking, for example, is the first one. Children develop their crisis, their crisis and critical thinking learn the importance of feedback and not only for the lesson, but for their whole social life. Second cooperation, theater requires discipline that encourages teamwork, whether it is written, theoretical process, or is in action. Creativity, third, creativity. Through creative actions, children understand the world in total, in a unique way, preparing them for the challenges of, the, of uh, their future life. Communication, the sociality of children and communication between them accelerate and is completed through art and especially through theater. Expressive media development. Students learn to use verbal and nor non-verbal techniques in a new way to deliver their message. Body language involves, vocabulary develops, and many more. These are the goals of, the pro of this project, of this team project. We made a wide research and implement the project at the project Creative Steam. The Creative Steam project aims to integrate the use of theater techniques in secondary, and not only theater techniques, uh, generally, generally not, in secondary education through the development of appropriate tools. We have developed a methodology related to the application of theater in secondary education classroom that will be practiced and will, will cover the secondary education curriculum. We create a method, both in theory and practice, with scenarios, examples, case studies in collaboration with other methods. It should be emphasized that in the method we propose and encourage students to live, to, to, to experience the lesson are not memorized and not memorize it. Thus, the learning process is more interesting and because the student that has only memorized something will soon forget. But if the lesson has been experienced, it is remembered forever. The principles on which this study is based and the proposals we make are based on the poetic belief that a real inspired scientific research is art. The pioneer scientists use personal imagination and inspiration in order to enter in a new field that have not been researched and therefore are totally unknown, makes hypotheses that involve the hypothetical adverb. For this reason, we will uh, use a very small word, the word if. This word is the beginning of everything in art. It is the driving force that activates the imagination. Imagination has its own logic. Imagination and logic collaborate and mixed in a wonderful and ideal way for the scientists to come to a conclusion. A conclusion is evaluated by a scientific experiment after that. It is inconceivable to assume that the scientists of previous centuries could capture, for example, the wavy form of sound signal, the existence of electrons that moves around the core, the black holes of the space without starting point offered by imagination. The scientists so observed, wondered, ex experimented, and eventually after many adventures reached a conclusion. Imagination, image, experiment, proof and conclusion. Art 
is based on the image and the virtual representation of reality. A key element of art is also a discovery and joy of discovering new things, emotions and experiences. When viewing a work of art, artist, uh, theatrical, musician, whatever, a dialogue is created in the viewer where impressions from artwork, the feeling he creates, the experiences he already has, his memories awakening, awaken, chat with each other and deploying his critical thinking. In this way, art goes a step forward and promotes, promotes humanity and higher ideals and principles, introducing art into, te into teaching by turning STEM into STEAM, we seek exactly the same thing. The game, the importance of play. Here we have a point out to great importance of another misunderstood and almost banned from education and not only operation, the game. The key element of both the child and the scientist. The child plays by making different things with uh, the Lego blocks, but also the scientist plays mixing different materials to make a new one. The fact that the adult have some other materials in his play than the child say Lego, make little and small difference. The Creative STEM project wants to make the game decisively in the learning process you develop in the classroom. At this point, it is advisable to give a definition of STEAM. What is STEAM? STEAM is, is an educational approach to learning the uses science, technology, engineering, the arts and mathematics as access point for guiding student inquiry, dialogue and critical thinking. The end result are students who take thoughtful risks, engage in experiential learning, persist in problem solving, embrace collaboration and work through the creative process. Well, the introduction of art into STEM lesson is not a simple process. A more general adaptation of the entire school, the educational process on the part of the state, of course. Well, uh, performing arts, the game in the classroom must be sift a little to the creative educational game. This art has to offer a field of action full of stimuli different from those we have known so far in the conventional teacher-centered teaching methods. What do, what do we mean by this? I will try to say it with an example. What we mean is that the famous, for example, uh, most of you, all of you, you know this painting of Edvard Munch, The Scream. Uh, well, this famous painting, for example, The Scream, if we confront it as a piece of art, expresses strong feelings of, of despair, if we get into the field of science, can be a cause and starting point to speak, to learn, to experiment, to play, if you, if you like, and discuss about the sound waves. As the central form of the painting expresses a loud sound in one scream, therefore the Edvard Munch painting can be subject to analysis, examination, and knowledge of the sound uh, waves. This can also be expressed as well in the wavy form, like all sound waves of some frequency, low or high frequency. 
The painting enables the teacher to approach many scientific issues. We will refer the most obvious. What could have happened and the central uh, and the central figure makes this scream? Many can be the answer. Something in his environment or inside. Something universal or isolated that he sees in front of him, etc. If the teacher wants to refer to this historic painting, he will find that it was created on the occasion of the explosion of the volcano, whose material and gases that ejected scattered disaster and horror to the human beings around. This makes the central figure get this extreme expression that we see in the eyes, in the screaming mouth, the, the, place, of the, the place of the hand and the body posture. But there is also the rest of the painting beyond the central figure. Red, fiery colors, and the artist special style, well, the style and the form is expressionism, to deliver heaven and atmosphere is not far from the natural phenomenon called atmospheric perspective and concerns the creation of polar stratospheric cloud created after the eruption of a volcano and become visible during dawn and sunset. So it is, it is available to the teacher to define the central theme and focus on it to do the steam lesson related uh, with the sound waves. And so what should he do? Uh, the necessary steps for the teacher are, first, very good knowledge of the scientific subject. This knowledge is not only attached to the wording of the textbooks, but teacher, must, must know the subject so well that they will teach what one has imagined and create seen in, in uh, a scene it in image. For example, we just that we we just need to know the characteristic of movement of our planets, of our solar system, but also have images of this perpetual move. Second, imagination and inspiration. The good knowledge of scientific subject will also result in the intervention of art for learning, teaching in the course of the lesson. If we have a picture of a movement of the planets, then it is not a long distance to imagine and inspire a dance in the classroom. And I'm very serious about that. The planet are swirling around the sun and around themselves as it is in a dance like tango, like vals, etc. Third, expanded horizons and interest in area such as art and in any case beyond the specialized subject one teaches. Fourth, concentration on the scientific subject we want to teach. The involvement of art in the learning process has some danger. One of them is that the wealth and the freedom offered by art, whether it is theatrical action or a role playing or our starting point is a painting maybe or movie or a movie scene can make us and all the classroom escape from our goal. Our goal are nothing more than the lesson and the knowledge. Our goal is also to collaborate and develop critical thinking in children and not endless discussion and art, or, or, or on art issues. We must not forget that we are at school and so art bends its head 
and serves the process of knowledge, learning, and education. Fifth, exact design of the course structure. The phase and the stages from which it will be passed so that the starting that uh, starting from an art starting point to the end, the scientific conclusions required by the STEM lesson. The core structure is very important to be very well designed so that what we have mentioned above and the action of the children's involvement to spread the lesson and get it out of, the, of, this, uh, of its goal. Next, is the concentration of the material we need for the lesson. This material can be supervisory material in video, in slides or paper, and we can find it in books and mainly from the internet. The material we need must cover both parts of the lesson and the scientific and artistic. A painting, a music, a scene of a movie, must be available in the lesson along with the materials we will need for each scientific part. Uh, so first level of, of approach. The starting point of the lesson must often be from an artistic event we have chosen. A painting and construction, a simple painting <laughs> of, or a collage with a simple materi material or theatrical or uh, kinesiological action, dance, for example. The professor presents a painting and talks about him, the teacher. His reason must allow students to be discussed and participating with questions and comments. If, for example, in a biology, anthropology lesson, we select this painting, uh, it is very easy, well known, reverence, anatomy course. The teacher can start from the painting, the color, the person, the teacher and the student in the painting, the light and where it comes from, etc. Many other things related to the painting. What are they, the group of the people in the painting, what are they examining? The anatomy of the arm that the teacher will end up will easily bring him to describe the nervous system of the human body, for example. Okay, Second yeah. level of approach. The yeah. reference to the painting are important and the students will find them interesting, but our focus is the actual lesson. So, with the methodology and certain steps we approach our lesson, we have chosen a work of art so we can reach our specific result. Not only because the painting says it all, but there are others it insinuates and others are deducted by the viewer. We reach and focus upon this the characteristic and their nature, their synthesis and behavior. And behavior. Uh, for example, as we said before, about the swirling of the planets of the solar system. We can start from a painting of an unknown illustrator such as Andrian Chairman uh, randomly, I found in Google and fits to what I want to say to you and discuss, observe the colors, the shapes, the bodies, and then reach their movement. The same can be done with the movement of an electrons and protons in the molecule of carbon or copper, for example, and maybe more. Third level of, uh, uh, of approach, movement, action participation, cooperation between the students. We always seek to involve children in some action. This action can be an improvisation with or without text. 
a real dance, as I mentioned before, or invented for the lesson, a construction, a visual painting action, a collage, an, acti an activity of making a material that may look like, oh, let's say, cooking, etc. Uh, in an astronomy lesson, for example, when we are talking about the movement of the Earth and the other bodies around the Sun, art gives us many opportunities for action. In addition to learning valves and shrilling like a celestial bodies, the teacher can organize a debate proportional to the trial in which the Galileo sacred, there is a painting by Joseph Nicholas Robert Fleury of the Italian school, uh, as you see in the screen, where the holy examination tries Galileo who claim that the earth turns. The action, the theatrical activity. Action is the key for the lesson to be must be experiential, to maintain its team working character, to cultivate critical thinking, to open new horizon to, to the students, to develop their imagination and their sensitivity, to make them through dialogue, to express themselves freely, to express their views, whatever it is, and that will arise from their critical thinking to chat and confront with the views of other students and thus to develop their relationship and sociality. Fourth level of approach. Uh, observation, conclusion from the action. While the action, the third level of approach, as I, as I mentioned, has a freedom and many elements of fun and play in relation to the subject of the lesson, always subject of the lesson. At the fourth level, we, we gradually return to the lesson as we know it. We concentrate on the subject and specify the conclusion that came from previous level of, of approach. The experiential process, images and performances created during the action must be summarized and left in a memory and experience of student as knowledge. This is achieved by two conditions. First, the teacher to, to choose a good, meaningful and rich action for the third level of the approach. An action that kinesiological, improvisation, pain, painting, etc., whatever, is close to the subject. Second, to ask some question that will clearly join the action with the lesson taught. Questions that specify and clarify the characteristic of the action that took place previously with the lesson. If, for example, we remain in the example of Galileo and debate we organized, then the questions stimulated by the teacher should rely on those elements that Galileo took into account to conclude that the earth is the one that turns around and not the opposite. Around from the sun and not the sun around the earth. As his prosecutors insist on the holy Inquisition. In, if the previous stage had a dramatic charge on the part of the judges of the Holy Inquisition for Galileo, the dramatic elements are now abandoned and concentrate more in the physical scientific data and measurements that prove that the planets of our solar system have specific track following within data and miserable intervals, distances, etc. And so Galileo was right to class with, with the darkness of the priest. Final results 
and conclusions. We started now from the field of art. We talk about a work of art. We analyze it, its details. We focus in its individual elements. We conclude and assume things that are beyond the artistic de depiction. We create actions and games with movements and dramatic energy. And finally, we came to scientific conclusion, abandoning the artistic environment and atmosphere. So the STEAM approach, the A between, between the E and M, and why we recommended it. What did we earn from such a voyage? We believe many things, and even in different fields and areas of children's development, and especially adolescence, which is even more important. The areas in which such a process are many and necessary for the integrated development of the young men. Learning becomes knowledge and experience and the role of the school escapes specialization and training and comes to provide education with all the meaning of the word and in depth. We depicted the learning process and installed experience in the process of transferring the teacher to students. While in the traditional way we have been taught with students with terms and dates and names that are far from our daily lives, which we do not use and which we only meet in the lesson with the STEAM process and with the help of art, we lived them. While the teacher had previously brought in the classroom and conveyed his energy and authority, and only the student, only, uh, only the attention and the passive acceptance. Now we have a living group that discusses, judges, comments, counts, and evaluates factor, uh, builds, reasoning, definition, and rules to class, but makes a lesson rich in reference and images. With the mediation of art, the horizon of the lesson are expanding and the students coming out of the classroom have enriched their experience and have heard things from the vast and rich space of art. Well, it is really very important to know how the sound works, that it is transmitted through the air because the sound of the music is pleasant to us and the loud sound of a motorbike, for example, is unpleasant and unbearable. But it is more enjoyable and rich to find out this as a teacher plays it uh, in front of us, the famous Edward Munch painting, uh, as I show you the screen. Sound waves are also the sound that comes out of a scientific instrument like the apason, you know, this instrument that in my, in my days uh, the, the teacher used. But sound waves is also a dramatic cry, a dramatic scream that breaks out a human being frightened by an ecological disaster, for example, that happens behind him with a heavenly theory heaven in the case of the table from a volcano. But if we confine, we will learn a few things about the sound waves, which we will probably forget about in a very short time. But if we approach the sound waves through the, the dramatic scream of, of Munch, we reach very easily and then reach our thinking with the modern men's drama climate change and the huge forest fires occurring in Amazon, California, Gran Canaria, and or just outside Madrid before a year. And uh, 
to, to, to other places of the world. Well, thank you very much. And I will now show you first uh, uh, the, uh, the, our, our, our site. Uh, Κώστα με τον ίδιο τρόπο θα, θα μπω στο... Ναι, απλά πρέπει να το βγάλετε αυτό στο ξέρει να... αυτό να βάλετε στο browser το site και να το... Να βάλετε στο browser το site μάλιστα για μισό λεπτό να το δω τώρα όλο αυτό uh, Your passion please Sorry. Και να κάνω πάλι share post, ε. Ναι, ναι. Να το παράθυρο που έχετε το site. Βλέπετε. Ναι, ναι, ναι. Okay, this is the first page. This is a slider that uh, uh, has, uh, has some uh, images, but Uh, well, to the header, you can uh, you can uh, read about the project, about the partnership, uh, and the partners that involve in this project, the objectives and results, the outputs, activities, and videos. And we will see one video uh, after a while. But we can go in order to use it the methodology and the case studies after that. This is the head of the uh, project and the site. So we uh, go to the methodology and uh, a teacher who wants to use the, uh, the method can read many things, theoretical things uh, about uh, the, the STEAM project and to find many other alternative uh, methods to approach the teaching. Uh, Uh, previous uh, learning uh, methods and you can take many elements from these different uh, sources in order to make uh, their uh, uh, his, his her uh, teaching more uh, interesting in the classroom. So in the end there is the methodology step by step. Well, here is another introduction, the imagination, the concentration. This is a theory uh, of all the um, uh, of all the method, uh, more or less what I tried before uh, some minutes to explain to you. Uh, many of them uh, probably is well known to you. But we have to, in order to be more Uh, precise, we had to mention in the uh, uh, in the site, in the method, and always uh, things like that to be available for the teacher. The case study, we have too many case studies in four sectors. We will have them in a while. It's a little bit well. Okay. In four sectors science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. You can find here too many uh, uh, examples uh, which explain to you step by step what to do in order to make this specific what uh, this lesson that uh, we propose to you or other lesson according and following the method uh, as I explained to you and as you can read it in the uh, in the sign. Let's take one, the science. Science is, has too many uh, 
examples and case studies. Uh, for example, the sound waves and the scream that I uh, try to explain. Now it is more specific and you can see uh, the course material, what the teacher needs to have near to, uh, to him in the classroom in order to make a, uh, to make a lesson like this. Phase A, first level of, our, of approach, what to do, step by step. Fa phase two, second level of approach, what to do, third level of approach, the action, what to do um, uh, with uh, uh, the, the, uh, this case study in order to put all the, uh, all the classroom in action. And phase D, observation, conclusion from the action, discussion with the, with, uh, with the uh, students. Phase E, final conclusion of the STEAM process. Uh, you will find many other elements in the case study, such as, uh, because it is more detailed, uh, the, uh, the teacher can, uh, can do with uh, the... Uh, with this starting point of this um, uh, of this painting and uh, images and uh, many other things uh, that uh, you can use. Uh, some of the case study has uh, uh, links that you can go in order to find uh, a, a examples to show in uh, in the classroom. Another one that I will uh, show it to you is buoyancy, Janosi, Yatus Elinus. Buoyancy, upward force on an immersed body. We start from this uh, uh, painting uh, of uh, Delacroix, Eugène Delacroix, romantic uh, painter, uh, who show this is the um, a Jesus and his uh, uh, student in the in the Sea of Galilee. Well, we see here a boat, and uh, the the students, uh, the the yes, the students of the uh, of Christ who is terrified by the troubled water. But uh, Jesus knows something more, and he is calm and he sleeps. So we starting, well, we have the material, the stage one, the painting of the first step, the painter, and who is Ferdinand Victor Eugène de la Croix? It's not bad to say a few, a few uh, words about his, um, uh, about his life, about his identity, about the painting, the action that we can make, I will show you uh, a, a small video uh, because I made it in the theater, not with my student because I don't have students, but uh, with uh, uh, my uh, uh, four of my actors, actresses, and you will see what I mean. The action, the technology of floating stage three and then an experiment when we can uh, insist on the type on uh, uh, what the experiment teach to us and uh, uh, what is happening to different uh, elements to different things like a cork like a wood like aluminium like a glass and whatever and here is a case study on states. Uh, you can see, yeah. uh, Sir Sound prep na kante ya na peksi kyo ichos. Okay. Uh, Posto to kano sto posta. To vraze te tora kante stop sharing. Stop sharing. Okay. Ke na pao sta. Ke meta kante meta kisa na valte to to idio share. Uh, Ina to an na to anixo. Να, Έχει να... ανοίξει το ίδιο, το ίδιο, το ίδιο. Okay. Απλά υπάρχει ένα κουμπάκι κάτω αριστερά όταν κάνετε share που λέει share sound. Α, ah, οκ, okay. ναι. Και σε ευχαριστώ πάρα πάρα πολύ. Οκ, okay. let's meet 
Ακούτε! Δεν βλέπουμε, όχι, δεν βλέπουμε το. Βλέπουμε την άλλη οθόνη, κύριε Καμψή. Βλέπετε objects can be bold or different. Δεν βλέπουμε το βίντεο. Δεν βλέπουμε το βίντεο. We use... Μάλιστα. Ε, τώρα βλέπετε κάτι καλύτερο? Τώρα ναι. Οκ. Okay. Ακούτε κιόλας. Wood, plastic ναι. and solid glass. Οκ, okay, this is the presentation of the material. Το βλέπετε σε μεγάλη οθόνη, Κώστα. Μια χαρά. The painting of uh, Eugene de la Croix, Jesus in the Sea of Galilee. Probably Eugene de la Croix portrait. Look at the painting and tell me what do you see? A boat uh, in the water with uh, people on board. And uh, how is the sea? It is rough. Can you guess who they are? I think they are some fishermen who go there to cast their throw nets in the sea or lake as the waters are turbulent. There is a storm. Right. How do you see them? What do they feel? They seem to be very afraid. Well, everyone? Not everyone. There is also a person that sleeps peacefully. Okay, that's right. Do you like the painting? Mm. It is very beautiful. The painter painted him with very nice colors. He depicted the storm very realistically, the boat going up and down, uh, the sky, which is dark, but also the anguish in the faces. It is the painting of the French classical painter Eugene de la Croix. Jesus in the Sea of Galilee is the title. This scene is based on a story narrated in three Gospels of the New Testament. A raging storm breaks out with Jesus and his disciples sail across the Sea of Galilee to spread the message of Christ. They all are afraid that Jesus sleeps despite the wind and the storm, thus demonstrating the power of Christian faith. Let's say some things about Ferdinand Victor Eugène de la Croix. Born on 1798 and died August 1863. He was a French Romantic artist, the leader of the French Romantic school. De la Croix took for his inspiration the art of Rubens, another painter, very famous, and painters of the Venetian Renaissance, with an attendant emphasis on color and movement. Dramatic and dramatic content characterized the central theme of his maturity. Delacroix was also inspired by Lord Byron, and also illustrated various works of William Shakespeare and the German author Johann Wolfgang von Goethe. Let's pretend with our imaginations that we are in a boat in the middle of the sea and improvise that we row to go deep to cast our throw nets. Start! Okay! Suddenly, a storm hits and tosses, tosses the boat up and down. We are feared to much for our lives. Someone falls into the sea and others save him. Good, very good. Okay, and we keep road go deep. That's good, thank you very much. Let's sit again and think about our experiment. Why the boat and the people don't go straight to the bottom of the sea? How much does the boat weigh with nine people on it plus the weight of the, of the boat? 
Let's guess, huh? more or less. The, if we assume that uh, they weigh uh, 70 kilos each, and uh, if the boat is about 500 kilos, then we conclude that it is uh, more or less uh, a ton. And how can a body of about 1,000 kilos not go straight to the bottom, especially in a storm? Because the boat is made of wood. But there are also huge iron ships, full of merchandise that travel the oceans and still to no sea. Correct. Well, how do we explain it? Because we float in the water. Indeed. It is the phenomenon of buoyancy. What exactly is this phenomenon of buoyancy? Okay. We used three different objects, one of wood, one of glass, and one of plastic. If we put the wooden first, we will see that it flows. If next put the plastic, also flows. But if we put the solid glass, it stays in the bottom. Buoyancy or upthrust is an upward force exerted by liquid that op opposes the weight of a partially or fully immersed object. In a column of liquid, pressure increase with depth as a result of the weight of the overlying liquid. Thus the pressure at the bottom of the column of liquid greater than at the top of the column. Okay. Similarly, the pressure at the bottom of an object submerged in a liquid greater than the top of the object. The pressure difference results in a net upward force on an object. So, this was one uh, uh, case study that we make in the theater. And uh, I want to declare that I'm not a teacher. I, have, uh, I haven't your experience in teaching, but uh, I, uh, and I try just to make a, a case study as representative as I can in order somebody to understand and uh, what is the first, the second, the third step, and in in order to, uh, to 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 implement in the classroom with your teaching experience and your knowledge, uh, I can I can uh, show you another uh, another. Uh, do we have uh, time, Costa? Yes, we do have time. I don't know if we have questions. Oh, uh, yeah. Something that uh, someone would like to to ask in relation with the methodology yeah. of the case study. Indeed. Questions or comments or uh, uh, something else? Well, uh, 
I, we don't have for the moment, so you can go proceed. You can show also the second one. Okay. If you have any comments or you have any questions, you can either speak now or you can uh, leave also a message in the chat so that we can take it uh, after, even if you cannot uh, speak. So. Okay, uh, do you see this? Yes. Valete palto share sound. Excuse me? Valete palto share sound. Ne, ne, to evalo, to evalo. Tora, uh, okay. To site, to vlepete? Ne, ne, ne. Okay. Uh, well, to the header of the site, there is uh, a, a section here which uh, is the videos and will be all the videos. Now, because we created uh, before today's, uh, uh, there is only two, the one that you uh, already see and the other one, which is very on time because uh, uh, it concerns the earthquake, unfortunately. Do you see now, Costa? Costa? Ναι, ναι. Ε, το βλέπουμε. Ναι, βάλ το full screen. Το βλέπετε τώρα. Οπα. Ναι, μια χαρά. Ωραία. Οκ. Please allow me to stop from time to time in order to uh, explain something. Here is the materials that we need. This is another, uh, another case study. Every case study, in every lesson, in every... Uh, in every particular uh, subject we have to we have to learn in the classroom has its own materials and its own way to handle it and to confront it and to uh, to manipulate it. So the creativity by the teacher is big, I can say. So here the material. Uh, uh, is not uh, uh, something like uh, a painting. Now we need two large slices of bread, a bottle of pastry or whipped cream, sandy, a small plastic platter or a piece of blue nylon uh, in order to, to put them, uh, to, to put all, all the materials and make the, the experiment, a bottle of ketchup, an egg, hard boiled, a common knife, a bottle of blue food color or any color, small casserole, a flame source, a spoon. So in all case studies, we choose very simple materials. Materials that we can find in our houses or the teacher can ask from the uh, students to bring them to the next uh, to the next lesson. Uh, for example, to the previous case study, uh, we uh, used uh, sticks from, from the broom we had in the theater. So the material in this case study is this. And we go forward. We will need some pieces of bread, whipped cream, a ketchup, acrylic or any kind of blue color, a small casserole, a flame source, a spoon, a knife, and an egg. If we have an egg, we can make an omelette, we can boil it, we can cook it, but we can also transform it into an entire planet. And this way, the egg can teach us what is happening inside the earth. We just have to find an egg and boil it. Somewhere around, we can find an egg and all the other materials in order to make our lesson about the earthquake.
Well, this is an improvisation. This is an improvisation that I organize on the stage with uh, very simple elements. This can be any kind of, uh, of uh, papers, pieces of papers and everything. Uh, well, the, the chicken that uh, we had there, it's not necessary. Well, the students can ask for egg, one egg or other or many other in the, uh, in the classroom where the, the teacher hide it before, uh, five minutes before the lesson. Let's boil it with the material student bricks for the lesson. The well, flame shows. We insist the, the participants, the students to participate and bring things and not all the, uh, all the things bring by the, uh, by the teacher. No, the, uh, the students, according to the team building that uh, you have and uh, the communication that you build in the classroom can bring this material or the tools or whatever you uh, you uh, need for the lesson. A small casserole. They bring a gas uh, source, a flame of source, a casserole. The water. and the egg in order yeah, to boil it. Now is fresh and we have to boil it. Well boiled in order to be strong, to be massive. After we boiled well, look, the surface of the earth and the egg where all live and work and walk is made up of large pieces. Plates, like the cell on an egg. They are called tectonic plates. The tectonic plates move because there is a soft layer underneath. And when they move, we have earthquake. But why are they moving? Because something is happening inside, inside the earth and inside the egg, of course. And since we cannot go to the center of the earth, let's go to the center of the egg. What do we see here? Mm, the egg white and the yolk. What is the color of the yolk? Red. Right. Red is in the center of the earth. Here is a little bit yellow. The same will happen in the center of the earth, of course, because there, the earth boils with all its material, uh, mainly iron and nickel. But a little further out, what color is it? White. Is it hot? No, it's soft. It is the same on earth. Around the boiling core, there is a soft layer warm, but not boiling. And uh, why does the surface of the Earth shake and we have earthquakes? Because the surface of the Earth, which is called lithosphere, is on the soft part of the Earth that is called asthenosphere. Like here. But to be precise, before the asthenosphere is the... The core! Right. The core is red in the middle of the earth because it is extremely burning and boiling. So with the core below that boils and screws into the center of the earth, the soft layer of the earth, which is called asthenosphere. Asthenosphere, right. Let's move to the next phase of the experiment. We have here all the materials we need. Ketchup instead of corn. 
whipped cream instead of the astenosphere and some pieces of bread for the lithosphere. First, we lay the core. More. Okay. Second is the cream as a asthenosphere. Okay. And finally is the leaf sphere and we have some pieces of bread instead of a uh, lithosphere. Put them. Well done. So, the tectonic plates shake and rub against each other. This causes the earthquakes. And here we also have the explanation on how the mountains were created. Because when the tectonic plates come into contact and push each other upwards, that's how the mountain and entire mountain ranges are created. And thus it is explained that the Earth at the beginning of the creation of the planet was something like this. And then, with the passage of billions of years, the tectonic plates move away uh, from each other, forming the continent, while the void filled with water, creating the ocean and the sea and all to the other space. Right. So here, as I told you before, we propose some uh, other sources like uh, uh, from uh, websites in uh, Google or uh, YouTube uh, films in order the students to understand better uh, what is happening in, uh, uh, in the earth. It's exactly what is happening with the Arabic plate right now in Turkey and we have this massive catastrophe. Well, this was t two uh, case studies that uh, I put them uh, made by uh, the Center of Higher Education in Theater Studies uh, in our theater. And uh, in a while, in some days, some uh, maybe a week, we will have too many others made by the um, uh, by the other uh, partners. Well, the the upper purpose of the um, of the of the project of the of the method that uh, we propose, the creative steam, uh, it is not to stay to this, exactly to this uh, case studies, but the teacher to use the, 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 the method and to create his own technique, technique to approach STEM subjects and STEM lessons. <clears throat> well, uh, do we have any question now probably okay are there any <laughs> questions or comments
Is it all clear? Uh, in the, the videos, you can find them in the website. I have uh, sent you the link in the chat. So this is the, the link. If there are no questions, we can have uh, a small break, 10 minutes until uh, five past uh, seven. We thank Mr. Kamsis for the methodology. And in the last hour, we will have uh, Corina Pepsinidou, which is the uh, headmaster of uh, the second higher uh, High School of Heracas. She will uh, present us uh, 11 case studies that they have uh, used in her school uh, based on this method. Ah, there is a question. Here we have involved just four students. What about 25 students? There is also, there is also as I can see, uh, a question from Irini Kriona. How can we use this material in theoretical subjects such as language or literature? Well, uh, the project concerns the STEM uh, lessons. And as actually, you know, as uh, Mr. Balaska's answer, there are um, other me me methods in order to approach uh, uh, lessons like, uh, uh, like this. The creativity creativitylearning.eu site that we create uh, before, before some years. There are too many uh, with action synergy also. Uh, there are uh, too many uh, case studies that you can use, including the language and uh, religion and geography and history and everything concerns the elementary school. But you can read also a very detailed theory in order to, uh, to find the way to teach your lesson in uh, literature and language. Creativity learning, I can read it. I put them, I put already in the chat. I don't know oh, really? Ah, okay. 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 Uh, related with the uh, question of Yulia, uh, we will see uh, when Mrs. Pacinido will uh, come uh, in the final hour, we will see case studies that were uh, implemented in uh, classes of 25 students or more. So there's not a problem in relation with the number of, uh, of students. Something else? Okay, so thank you, Mr. Kamsis. Uh, uh, we are going to a 10 minute break until five past, uh, five past seven, and we continue with the final hour with Mr. Uh, Percinidou. Mrs. Percinidou. Ε, μου λέτε από ποιο σχολείο του Γέρακα θα είναι η επόμενη... Το δεύτερο γυμνάσιο. Άρα πια είναι δευτεροβάθμιο. Δευτεροβάθμιο, κυρία μου, το πόλεμο.
Δεν σας ακούω. Γεια yes. σας. Βγάλουμε κάτω. Ακούτε. Ναι. Ε, με πέταξε έξω και ξαφνικά δεν σας ακούω και δεν, δεν κατάλαβα τι έγινε. <laughs> όχι, όχι. Βγάλουμε κάτω. Μέχρι και ε, πέντε. Μέχρι και πέντε. Ναι, ναι. Ωραία, ωραία. Ευχαριστώ πολύ. Να είστε καλά. Να ρωτήσω κάτι, μια και κάνουμε διάλειμμα για τα χθεσινά. Δεν έχουμε, μας έχετε στείλει. Δεν σας τα έχω στείλει ακόμα. Ωραία, εντάξει, εντάξει. Οκ, οκ, εντάξει, εντάξει. Ευχαριστώ πολύ. Ωραία. Γεια σου, Κορίνα. Καλησπέρα. Τι κάνεις, Κορίνα. Καλά, μια χαρά. Έχουμε ξεκινήσει. Μιλάμε Έχουμε ελληνικά. Κάνει... Όχι, αγγλικά μιλάμε, αλλά... Αν και βέβαια η πλειοψηφία είναι Έλληνες. Αν τέλος πάνε, τα έχουν και κάποιοι ξένοι. Ε... Πώς το λένε... Ε... Όχι, έχουμε διάλειμμα. Μέχρι τις και πέντε. Α, ωραία. Και μετά, εγώ... Και μετά εσύ. Εντάξει. Πώς πήγε το πρώτο μέρος. Μια χαρά. Τέλεια. Καλησπέρα, Κορίνα. Α, καλησπέρα, κύριε Καμτσέ. Δεν, δεν σας είδα. Όχι, ήμουν κλειστός τώρα, άνοιξα. Okay. Uh, are we back? Can you give me a sign that you are back? Okay. 
game. Make a, I don't know, a like or something, <laughs> a reaction to see that you are all here. Okay, so I see that some of, them, some of you are uh, here, so uh, we can uh, continue. As I have told you, now I give the floor to Ms. Corina Pertzinidou. She is the headmistress of the second high school of uh, Yerekas. And uh, Corina, you have the floor. Okay, thank you, Costas. I'm Corina. Uh, yes, I'm uh, the principal of uh, the Third Gymnasium Yereka. Uh, I'm an ICT teacher and uh, also uh, the coordinator of this project, uh, Erasmus KA2 Creatives Team, uh, on behalf of my school. Um, today, I'm going to present you uh, the lesson, the 11 lesson plans. Uh, original lesson plans that we have uh, created last year with my colleagues and um, uh, they have to do uh, about uh, STEM using art and uh, so they, they, they make this theme. Uh, it, they, there are, um, I'm going to present you lesson plans on mathematics ICT, uh, physics, and chemistry. Um, the, um, the structure of my presentation will be like uh, the methodology. Uh, I think that uh, you have been through the methodology with uh, Mr. Kamtsis. Uh, I'm going to show you um, the, the first part, which has to do with uh, the visualization, uh, the second part about artistic action, and the last part, which is uh, discussion. Uh, so I'm going to start with the first lesson plan, uh, which is about physics, and it is called, it, it, it has the tiled, uh, of the function of the cup of Pythagoras. Visualization. Display of images of ceramics. The role of ceramics is very important since on their surface the ancient history is written. Display of the function of the mug of Pythagoras. When it is filled beyond a certain point, a, a sip honing effect causes the cup to drain its entire contents through the base. Uh, we have artistic art action and experimentation, which was construction of the mug of Pythagoras. The mugs were made of clay by students in a pottery workshop. Particular emphasis is placed on the way the special hole is made in the bottom of the clay cup from which the liquid will come out. And the last part, which is reflection and debate, class discussion about the results of the construction and operation of the cup by simulating the mug of Pythagoras. We analyzed the concept of pressure, the role of air, and the role of liquid, and the connection among them. Uh, here is a short video. lesson plan uh, is... Um, uh, accompanied uh, with uh, a short video, but I'm not going to show you because we don't have uh, much time for this. I move on uh, to the next, uh, the second uh, lesson plan on physics. Uh, the title is Electric Current, Motion of Electrons. Uh, the visualization is uh, about a display of the painting of Night Stroke by Jonathan Harris. And uh, the artistic action and experimentation uh, is uh, the, uh, the Corina, students and the desks. Then, the 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 the
Α, mm. Έχεις πάρει μάλλον άλλο εικονίδιο από το... Τώρα τι φαίνεται. Τώρα φαίνεται αρτίστικα action experimentation. Εκεί ήμουνα. Ναι, τώρα μπήκα. Πώς άμα κάνω full screen το χάνω. Μπορεί. Τώρα τι φαίνεται. Αρτίστικα action experimentation. Ε, Για προχωρά. Ωραία. Ε, να, να συνεχίσω και θα μου πείτε αν αλλάζει. Θα σας πω όταν το αλλάξω. The students in the desks of a class were used. The desks were lined up in an imaginary line representing the conductor. The students represent the electrons moving at first erratically between the desks. When one student turns off the switch, the rest of the students move in one direction, representing the electric current. At the same time, they carry chocobars from a basket as, as if they were an electrical source providing energy to the consumer, which is the light bulb. I move on to another uh, slide. We don't see it. Okay. Uh, so I don't use uh, full screen. Now you see it? A reflection Actually, debate, yes. Okay. Uh, so uh, the problem is with the full screen. Um, we'll, uh, we'll have uh, no full screen. I hope you, uh, you can see it. Um, reflection and debate. Uh, we discussed la, the painting where the lightning stroke is the transfer of electrons from the clouds to the earth, carrying a huge amount of energy. Then we discussed the concept of electron, electricity, charge, and the electric source. Also, the students explore the transfer and conversion of energy from one form to another. The video, the short video, and then we move on to another uh, subject. It is my subject, ICT, Information Technology, and uh, the um, uh, title of uh, my lesson plan is uh, Get to Know the Bits and the Bytes. Visualization. The stimulus is a painting of two images in black and white of the famous painter Pablo Picasso. The students identified the two colors and they recalled other famous paintings of the painter, of the painter like Guernica. They talked about Guernica and what it symbolizes. In that painting, identified many colors. They made a comparison between the two paintings of Picasso in the terms of colors. Then we talked about bits, zero and one, and bytes, eight bits in a row. The students used paper to draw the black color. Then they formed with themselves a series of eight bits, eight students for eight bits, holding the white papers and the black ones according to the ASCII code creating the word card. For each letter, the eight students selected the appropriate series of papers, black and white, consulting the ASCII code. Here is the ASCII code. It, it is C. Um, this is a code that um, uh, transforms uh, letters, uh, symbols, and numbers to the binary um, code. This is the C, this is A, and this is T. Uh, and uh, the last part of the lesson plan, uh, we talked about the binary numeral system, a method of mathematical expression which uses only two symbols, typically zero and uh, one compared to black color and the white color, respectively, and corresponds to two states, the condition in which no current flows uh, through a wire. This is the state uh, zero, and it is the binary digit zero, and the state in which current flows through a wire, which is the state one, the binary digit one. I move on to another uh, lesson plan uh, of mine. Let's make a movie. It is um, uh, an audiovisual um, uh, lesson plan. Um, 
we have the screening of the film Bread and Alley by the Iranian director Abbas Karostami. And um, there, when we had the screening, um, I, we had a long discussion. Uh, at first, I covered the screen and uh, the students uh, were listening only to the sound. Um, and uh, I asked some questions. Uh, do you hear one or more sounds? What do they tell you about the plot of the work? Can you imagine the story, the heroes? Then the, there was the screening of the whole uh, movie. Uh, and I asked again questions. What, who does the film concern? What is the main central idea? In what way does the um, uh, director transmit uh, the message? Uh, we had also sociological analysis, that it is a film of individuality. It is a realistic depiction of things centered around a hero who gets into trouble and finds the solution to the problem himself. And we talked about the director that uh, he chooses an innocent uh, uh, subject because in uh, his country there is um, a severe censorship. Uh, also, we had uh, the technical analysis, camera, shooting angle, camera height from below, from above, shots, small, medium, uh, large, panoramic, camera movement, sound, loud, intense, or no sound, quiet. And uh, after this discussion, um, I encourage the students to make their, uh, their own scenarios using um, a storyboard. You can see here the storyboard. And uh, then I encourage them to use the camera and the techniques they learn to shoot their own short film. And they become uh, the movie makers, the directors, uh, the actors. Uh, and then uh, they choose, uh, um, uh, then they use the software for making movies in order to edit their film and to select the music. Uh, after the screening of their uh, own uh, movie, we had discussion about camera and shot corners, camera of movement, time duration, distance between characters, selection of sound, and use of software. Now, uh, I move on to uh, a lesson plan uh, focused on mathematics. It is the first degree equations with an unknown. The lesson started with a video showing uh, a balancer uh, between two skyscrapers. Then a discussion followed about balance, how important it is throughout the ride. And uh, we made um, references to the video and uh, what it might be rela related to the math lesson. Um, this is uh, a scale uh, and uh, a balance scale with two trays was placed at the classroom seat. By placing various objects, we brought it into a position of balance. The objects were wooden cubes, balls, paint cans, etc. The students, with the help of the teacher, managed to balance the scale. Then they were asked to make changes to the maces of the two pounds of the scale so that the scale would again balance. The students gradually and by experimenting with the scales managed to discover the properties of equality. That is, they added, subtracted, multiplied it, or divided the same objects to both trays so that the even balance was always maintained. The next step was to record in the table the properties of equality as a general scientific conclusion. And the last part, the next goal was to solve the first degree equation. Uh, for example, the calculation of an unknown, which in our example was the mass of a wooden rectangular, knowing the masses of known colored uh, cylinders. 
25 um, grams each. And uh, we created the balance on the scale as follows. Here is uh, the um, equation. Another lesson plan on mathematics is the, measurement, the measurement of circle, inscribed angles in a circle. The lesson started with two short videos about the ancient theater of Epidavros. Epidavros is uh, uh, an ancient uh, theater. Uh, this is for, um, uh, I know that the Greeks know that, but I tell that uh, for our uh, foreigner. Uh, participants. Uh, it is uh, a theater, the biggest and uh, very well known for the acoustic, the biggest theater in ancient Greece. Uh, the first video lasting about uh, two minutes entitled a title, the ancient theater of Epidavros, the archaeological site and the museum. And the second uh, entitled the ancient Greek theater, the parts of the theater. A discussion followed about the shape of the theater and why the ancients built their theaters in a circular shape. The majority of responses of the students were related to acoustics, while few were related to visibility. The teacher mentioned that the spectators sitting in the same row saw the scene from the same angle. When asked by the students how this is done, the teacher said that the answers will be given in the courtyard. Meanwhile, a rough shape was given on the board and the students learned what an inscribed angle means. Then for the artistic action, the students accompanied by the teacher were taken to the schoolyard. Half of the students took with them a chair with uh, the rest of the students took uh, protractors, rulers, cardboard, um, string and markers. They were uh, driven uh, into the center of football's great circle. The students with um, uh, the chairs were placed around the circle like uh, the spectators in the stands. With a paper tape, the students created a circle uh, cord and the actors were placed on it. They created inscribed corners with viewer vertices and edges the ends uh, of the paper tape. Then another group of students placed cardboard under the string in the vertices on the inscribed angles, measured and recorded the measures of the inscribed angles. They noticed that they all found the same result. The next lesson uh, held in the classroom, they liked it much more in the courtyard and uh, they try to classify the conclusions uh, that they found. Inscribed angles ending in the same arc are equal, are equal to each other. The measure of the inscribed angle is half the measure of the epicenters that uh, terminate on the same arc. Inscribed angles ending in semicircle are right. Uh, the measure of the inscribed is half the measure of uh, its corresponding arc. Another uh, lesson plan on mathematics. It is uh, again the circle measurement, but now there is a calculation of the P. Um, in class, we saw a video by Earth, the national uh, broadcasting, with the title The Olympic Circles in the Sky of the Stadium, Tokyo Closing Ceremony of the um, uh, 32nd Olympic Games, where they formed Olympic circles in the sky of the stadium. This was followed by a discussion about the Olympic Games and the Olympic cycles. Then the teacher drew a circle on the board and explanations were given with basic concepts, radius, diameter, arc, hold. The students accompanied by the teacher were taken to the schoolyard. While moving around the school grounds, they spotted objects in a circular shape, circular discs in the classroom, a gymnastic hoop and a bicycle in the courtyard, a round table in the corridor. Divided into groups, the students carefully wrapped in the circular objects with paper tape and measured the diameter of the objects 
with a tape measure. Next, the groups of students peeled off the paper tapes and placed them stretched on the chair on the classroom floor. Then with tape measures, they measured the lengths of the paper strips and they recorded them in a table below the respective diameters. In the next lesson, we learned division. The students working in groups divided the length of the corresponding circular object by its diameter and the miracle happened. The results were almost the same, about three something, 3.14, which is the P. Uh, we discussed this by saying that the amounts are proportional and that this um, uh, question uh, is symbolized all over the world with a small Greek letter P, initial letter of the world periphery. We also mentioned the importance of the constant P and how much the ancient mathematicians uh, had appreciated, uh, had approached it, but also how today's mathematicians deal with a constant P. Now we move on to another lesson plan on mathematics, but it has to do with uh, geometry and flat shapes. Uh, using a stimulus uh, Kandinsky paintings. A painting uh, hung upside down uh, was the occasion for Kandinsky's talent for abstract art to unfold. On the same occasion, the students were presented with many well-known paintings by Kandinsky, as well as videos with, the, with his biography and technique. In the next lesson, the students were divided into groups of four. They chose a painting that impressed them and tried, inspired by Kandinsky, to make their own visual intervention, to render it on a canvas or watercolor using colors, markers, watercolors, temperas, or pastels. First, they drew several shapes, squares, triangles, rectangles, circles, semicircles, uh, parallelograms and random shapes on colored cardboard using a ruler and a compass and then carefully cut them out with scissors. Then using a mock-up paper, they build a sculpture by using all their shapes. You can see here the sculpture. And at the third part of the lesson plan, after screening Kadeskin's videos, we discussed the music of its pieces of art and we listened to the sound of his shapes and colors. Uh, the students seemed enthusiastic with a link between art and geometry. Another lesson plan on mathematics, it is called Roots of Geometry, Arpedonaptes, construction of a, re a rectangular triangle with the Arpedoni. The students were shown various aerial photos of the Nile River in Egypt and, and discussed the problems of the residents resulting from its flooding. Initially, in the computer room, the students, with the help of the application contained in uh, the photo of the draw, photo of the draw is the national accumulator of educational content, uh, constructed a right triangle like uh, the Arpedonaptes did. Then they became Arpedonaptes themselves, engaged in the construction of a right angle triangle with Arpedoni. Uh, as uh, Arpedonaptes did in ancient Egypt with a ribbon. Arpedoni is a ribbon of uh, random length that they had bought. Uh, they applied the same technique, making their own right triangle. They drove the first two nails in positions A and B. You can see here A and B, all the positions, so that the rope AB was stretched, moved to D, to coincide with A and then move C to stretch the sections BC and CD. Uh, it is uh, much easier to be done than to describe it. Uh, the, the, this ribbon was um, uh, divided into uh, uh, 12 uh, different uh, pieces. As you can see here, you can see the students very easily. 
make uh, this uh, rectangular uh, triangle. We discussed the etymology of the word geometry, the first geometers, the construction of the right triangle with Arpedoni, and we discussed the necessity of the measurement of land, the correct construction of boundaries in the estates, the vertical construction of the yards and the walls, and the invasion of the right angle. Also, we were occupied with a history of Egyptian people and the impact of Nil on their lives. Another uh, lesson plan uh, on mathematics is called drawing the irrational numbers. The visualization is when the students were shown various images of uh, spirals that we find in nature or anywhere around us. Here you can see the breakwater in Utah uh, in the United States, the Vatican Museum, the, the stairs of the Mat Vatican Museum, and the Hameleon stay. Uh, so uh, we have the constructions on the artistic action. We have the constructions, uh, the construction of the Pythagor Pythagoras uh, spiral, Students construct the number root two after calculating the hypotenuse of a right angle and uh, isosceles uh, triangle with side one using the Pythagorean theorem. theorem. Uh, similarly, taking root two and side one as vertical sides, we make the next triangle with side root three. Continuing the process, we form a spiral, as you can see here. And uh, the second part, uh, after doing uh, the spiral, you, uh, you make uh, the students um, produced uh, paintings um, like uh, the goddess of Athena, like the starry night uh, inspired of uh, Van Gogh. Um, and uh, they used uh, the spiral uh, either enlarging or reducing it and fitting it into a painting. Uh, reflection and debate. The students understood uh, that irrational numbers have a certain length, which they learn to represent on the axis of real numbers. And they learn to recognize the existence of uh, irrational numbers through the spirals we find around us. And the last uh, lesson plan is about chemistry, the atomic structure. Uh, we had uh, the visualization uh, with a screening of a video named uh, The Vaults of Snowflakes from the famous play The Nutcracker performed by the Royal Ballet of London. Students describe what they have seen to main dan dancers and many others moving around them and around themselves. Uh, they answer to the question, what is needed to create a choreography? The students will come to the conclusion that there are some specific rules concerning the movement of the dancers. There is harmony and also there is coordinated movement. Each dancer depends on the other. So at the artistic action and experimentation, students are encouraged to dance in a certain choreography representing the atom of a lithium isotope while listening to a piece of classical music composed and played by a Korean composer, Stefanos Korkolis, on the piano. Six students are in the center forming a cycle and moving slowly and steadily representing the nucleus. Three other students are dancing around them and around themselves, re representing the electrons. All of them have signs of the subatomic particles, protons, neutrons, electrons, hanging on them, and they're holding signs of their charts. You can see the figures below, the photos below. And the third part of the lesson plan, informing the students that they will be learning about the structure of the atom and the atomic and mass number, discuss their experience and what they understood from it, calculate and define the A, the atomic and mass number uh, at lithium isotope, which uh, were represented before in the activity. Conclusion, 
atoms have different properties based on the arrangement and number of their basic particles. And this is the end of uh, our 11 uh, scenarios and the 11 lesson plans. The, this was a very, very, very brief uh, uh, presentation of them. Uh, we are going to arrange um, at our school an event where all uh, the scenarios, all the lesson plans will be presented in uh, detail. And um, Costas, if uh, the time allows, uh, can uh, uh, we have uh, this uh, video of uh, uh, our um, teachers after the implementation and their feedback? Yes, we have time. So, but you need to share the sound. I don't know if you have shared the sound. I think so. Uh, <laughs> Let, uh, let me try. And tell me if it is okay with the sound. No, it doesn't. We don't see anything. Huh? Do you see anything? No. No. Okay. No full screen again. No, you need to. You can't uh, hear anything. No, you need to stop sharing and then share again. But when sharing, you need to press a small box in the left. Okay. Which says share sound. Ah, okay, okay, I found it. Is that okay? Yeah. Οι μαθητές 
στα αριστά μου τα ηλεκτρονία κινούμενα αρχικά άκαπτα ανάμεσα στα δρανία, ε, κλείνοντα ένα παιδί το διακόπτη που φαίνεται ότι ανάβει ο γαμπτήρα, τα παιδιά κινούνται προ μία κατεύθυνση παριστάνοντα φρεκτό ρεύμα. Ταυτόχρονα μεταφέρουν σοκοφρετάκια από ένα καλάθι, σαν να είναι ηλεκτρική πηγή που παρέχει ενέργεια, ε, στον καταναλωτή που είναι ο γαμπτήρα που φτωχολεί. Οι μαθητέ σε αυτό το σενάριο αντιλήφθηκαν την έννοια των ελεύθερων ηλεκτρονίων, τη προσταλωρισμένη κίνηση των ηλεκτρονίων, καθώ και την έννοια τη ενέργεια που παρέχει η πηγή στον καταναλωτή. Διασκέδασαν αρκετά ε, και στο τέλο, βέβαια, έφεραν τα, σπο, τα σποφουρτάκια ε, που του έδωσαν την απαιτούμενη ενέργεια τι επόμενε ώρε. Το πρόγραμμα Erasmus Plus ΚΑΠΑ2 Creative Steam. Συνέβαλε στην ε, καλύτερη κατανόηση ιδιών ε, τη φυσική και τη θετική στάση των παιδιών απέναντι στο μάθημα. Ονομάζομαι Θεοδωρά Κοπούλο Ευσταθία. Ε, είμαι μαθηματικό στο δεύτερο γυμνάσιο Γέρακα και φέτο υλοποιήθηκε ε, το πρόγραμμα Creative Steam στο σχολείο μα με πολύ μεγάλη επιτυχία και ενθουσιασμό. Θα τολμούσα να πω. Ε, οφείλω να αναγνωρίσω ότι όλοι οι μαθητές ήταν πάρα πολύ προσεκτικοί στο μάθημα, συμμετείχαν ενεργά, τους είχε ενθουσιάσει ο καινούριο διαδραστικός εποπτικός τρόπος μαθήματος. Ε, τους άρεσε που στο μάθημά μας εντάχθηκαν νέες τεχνολογίες, που μπήκαν βίντεο, που κάναμε κατασκευές, που το μάθημα μετατράπηκε από δασκαλοκεντρικό σε ομαδοκεντρικό. Ε, ήταν πολύ σημαντικό το ότι ασχολήθηκαν και οι πιο αδύναμοι μαθητές, οπότε υπήρχε ενεργή συμμετοχή του 100% ε, του πληθυσμού της τάξης. Οι μαθητές ε, τους, ε, ήταν ενθουσιασμένοι με το ότι μπόρεσαν και συνεργάστηκαν ε, μεταξύ τους σε ομάδες των τεσσάρων ή των δύο ατόμων προκειμένου να παράγουν κάποιο έργο. Και αυτό σύσφυξε τις μεταξύ τους σχέσεις και τους έκανε να συνεργαστούν για ένα αποτέλεσμα που παρήγαγαν το οποίο εκτέθηκε στην τάξη μας και στο σχολείο μας και ήταν πολύ ευχαριστημένοι με το αποτέλεσμα του έργου τους. Ανέβηκε η αυτοπεποίθησή τους, η αυτοεκτίμησή τους που μπόρεσαν να ασχοληθούν ενεργά με τα μαθηματικά, ιδιαίτερα των μαθητών οι οποίοι ήταν πάντα αμέτωχοι στο μάθημα. Ε, οι μαθητές διαπίστωσαν με έκπληξή τους, μέσα από τις δραστηριότητες και τα βίντεο και τις φωτογραφίσεις και τις ταινίες που είδαμε, διαπίστωσαν ότι τα μαθηματικά βρίσκονται παντού. Ε, ευτυχώς διαπίστωσαν τη χρησιμότητα του μαθήματος και την αναγκαιότητα του να διδασκόμαστε μαθηματικά και ότι τα μαθηματικά δεν είναι απλά ένα διεκπεριωτικό μάθημα το οποίο το κάνουμε απλά για να γεμίσουμε τον έλεγχό μας. Είναι ένα μάθημα που μας χρειάζεται και το βρίσκουμε στην καθημερινότητά μας. Αναγνώρισαν ότι ε, οτιδήποτε έχει ανακαλύψει η επιστήμη και στα μαθηματικά και σε οποιοδήποτε άλλο τομέα ε, είναι επειδή από πριν προϋπήρχε η ανάγκη του ανθρώπου να επιλύσει ένα πρόβλημα άρα η επιστήμη έρχεται βοηθητικά να δώσει λύσεις σε προβλήματα της καθημερινότητας που είχαν να αντιμετωπίσουν οι άνθρωποι. Ε, ενθουσιάστηκαν παραδείγματος χάρη με το ότι η γεωμετρία και τα εμβαδά ανακαλύφθηκαν επειδή πλημμύριζε ο νήλος και οι άνθρωποι έπρεπε να ξαναμοιράσουν τα χωράφια τους ε, και έπρεπε να βρουν ένα χωράφι το οποίο να έχει την ίδια χωρητικότητα με το αρχικό άρα η σύφθη πολύ όμορφα, η έννοια του εμβαδού και η έννοια των ισοεμβαδικών χωρίων ε, κάτι που μέχρι τώρα ήταν ένα ψυχρό μάθημα, το μαθαίνανε για να το μάθουν, τώρα απέκτησε έννοια και χρησιμότητα ε, άρα μόνο θετικό αντίκτυπο που μπορεί να αφήσει όλη αυτή η ενασχόληση. Τα παιδιά το χάρηκαν πάρα πολύ, ενθουσιάστηκαν με τα έργα που έφτιαξαν και ανυπομονούν να με βλέπουν στην τάξη, να μπαίνουν με τον υπολογιστή και με τα εργαλεία μας για να κάνουμε ένα μάθημα ομαδοκεντρικό όπως αυτά που παρήθηκαν με το STEM. Σας συνιστώ ανεπιφύλακτα να το επιχειρήσετε. Ευχαριστώ. Γεια σας, λέγομαι Νίκος Αλβέρτης. Είμαι μαθηματικός στο δεύτερο γυμνάσιο του Γέρακα και στη σχολική χρονιά 2021-2022 υλοποιήσαμε μαζί με άλλους συναδέλφους μου το πρόγραμμα STEAM. Στην αρχή ε, ήμουν λίγο επιφυλακτικός για το, με το σκεπτικό ότι πώς τα μαθηματικά θα μπορέσουν να συμβαδίσουν εύκολα στη διδασκαλία μέσα από την τέχνη και το δημιουργικό παιχνίδι και τη δράση γενικά. Ε, ξεκινώντας όμως, ε, δημιουργήσαμε τρία σενάρια με τα τμήματα της Δευτέρας Γυμνασίου στα οποία δίδασκα. Το πρώτο σενάριο είχε να κάνει με εξισώσεις και ιδιότητες της ισότητας. 
Το δεύτερο σενάριο και το τρίτο έχουν να κάνουν με τον κύκλο. Το πρώτο σενάριο για τον κύκλο, ε, στο πρώτο σενάριο με τον κύκλο ασχοληθήκαμε με τις εγγεγραμμένες γωνίες και στο δεύτερο σενάριο με τον κύκλο ασχοληθήκαμε με τη μέτρηση του κύκλου και τον αριθμό π. Το βασικό σε αυτήν όλη την προσπάθεια που κάναμε ήταν η συμμετοχή όλων των μαθητών, αυτό θέλω να το τονίσω, η συμμετοχή όλων των μαθητών, που νομίζω, νομίζω ότι αυτό είναι και το κυριότερο σημείο στο οποίο πρέπει να εστιάσουμε και η προθυμία στους ρόλους στους οποίους ε, κάθε παιδί είχε αναλάβει. Τα σενάρια στα δικά μου μαθήματα ξεκινούσαν με ένα βίντεο Διαδεχόταν αυτό το βίντεο συζήτηση και κατά κάποιο τρόπο μια εισαγωγή στις μαθηματικές έννοιες στις οποίες θέλαμε να φερθούμε και στη συνέχεια με πρακτικό τρόπο, με υλικά τα οποία είτε εγώ είτε τα παιδιά είτε το σχολείο βρίσκαμε και διαθέταμε προσπαθούσαμε να το οπτικοποιήσουμε και να το κάνουμε βιωματικό. Αυτό που ήταν πολύ σημαντικό για μένα, ξαναλέω, ήταν η συμμετοχή των μαθητών και η προθυμία στην ε, ανάθεση των ρόλων. Στη συνέχεια, ε, αυτό που σκεφτόμουν σε όλη αυτή τη διαδικασία είναι πώς να μην αποκλείεται κάποιος μαθητής από αυτήν εκεί τη διαδικασία και αν έχει αποτέλεσμα όλη αυτή η προσπάθεια. Στο τέλος της χρονιάς, Κατάλαβα μέσα από αυτή τη διαδικασία ότι η προσπάθεια είχε αποτέλεσμα γιατί στις επαναλήψεις που κάναμε στα μαθήματα παρατηρούσε ότι οι έννοιες που είχαν διδαχθεί με αυτόν τον τρόπο ήταν ευκολό, ευκολότερα προσεγγίσιμες πάλι στις επαναλήψεις που κάναμε γιατί ε, αν κάπου υστερούσαν συζητώντας μαζί τους για το τι κάναμε εκείνες τις μέρες αμέσως επανερχόντας στη μνήμη τους. Ε, αυτό που σαν ε, τελική προσπάθεια πήρα από όλη αυτή τη διαδικασία ήταν ότι η μέθοδος αυτή για μένα είναι απόλυτα θετική, μόνο θετικά συμπεράσματα έχει και μόνο θετικά και θα παρακαλούσα αν μπορούσαν κι άλλους συναδέλφους μου να την εφαρμόσουν αυτήν όπου αυτό ενδείκνυται γιατί η παράγραφη στα μαθηματικά δεν είναι πάρα πάρα πολύ εύκολο όλες να προσεγγιστούν με αυτόν τον τρόπο. Κάτι ακόμα θέλουν πολύ καλή προετοιμασία τα μαθήματα αυτά και ε, μεγάλη προσπάθεια. Σας ευχαριστώ. Γεια σας. Ονομάζομαι Κωνστάντου Τζέσικα. Ε, είμαι χημικός στο δεύτερο γυμνάσιο Γέρακα και θα ήθελα να σας μιλήσω για την εμπειρία μου ε, στο πρόγραμμα Erasmus Kappa Alpha 2 Creative Steam. Το πρόγραμμα αυτό συνδυάζει την τέχνη με τις θετικές επιστήμες. Ε, έτσι και εγώ προσπάθησα να συνδυάσω τη τέχνη και συγκεκριμένα ε, το χορό και τη μουσική με τη χημεία. Ε, και δημιούργησε, δημιούργησε ένα σενάριο στο οποίο ε, αρχικά τα παιδιά Είδαν ένα, παρακολούθησαν ένα βίντεο από ένα κομμάτι ε, του καρδιοθράυστη και στη συνέχεια ε, συζητήσαμε πάνω σε αυτό και προσπαθήσα να τους διδάξω τη δομή ε, του ατόμου και τη θέση των ε, πρωτονίων, νετρονίων και ηλεκτρονίων και το, ε, το πώς κινούνται στο χώρο. Ε, αυτό έγινε μέσω μιας ε, δράσης ε, βιωματικής ε, ε, άσκησης μέσα στο εργαστήριο όπου πήραν μέρος στα παιδιά και μπόρεσαν και χόρεψαν ε, σε, σε κινήσεις έτσι ώστε να ε, μπορούν να αναπαραστήσουν το, τη δομή του ατόμου. Ε, αυτό είχε ένα πολύ μεγάλο ενδιαφέρον και για τα παιδιά γιατί αρχικά ε, δεν μπορούσαν να σκεφτούν πώς συνδέεται ο χορός, η μουσική ή το μπαλέτο ε, με τη χημεία και γιατί παρακολουθούν ε, ένα βίντεο α, από ένα χορευτικό στο μάθημα της χημείας. Όμως ε, στη συνέχεια άρχισαν να το κοιτάνε με περισσότερο ενδιαφέρον και ε, ένιωσαν ότι αυτό που έκαναν ήταν κάτι πολύ διαφορετικό, ε, τους κέντρισε το ενδιαφέρον 
ε, συμμετείχαν όλα μαζί τα παιδιά ε, στη δράση, στο χορευτικό που έκαναν τα ίδια ε, και ένιωθαν ότι κατάλαβαν στο τέλος του μαθήματος πολύ περισσότερο και πιο καλά ε, κάποια πράγματα ε, γιατί τα είδαν σε εικόνα και σε δράση μεταξύ τους και θεωρώ ότι τους άρεσε πολύ περισσότερο ε, και ακόμα και μαθητές οι οποίοι ε, δεν ενδιαφέρονται ίσως τόσο πολύ μέσα στην τάξη ε, τους ε, κινήθηκε το ενδιαφέρον και μπόρεσαν να μάθουν περισσότερο και καλύτερα κάποια πράγματα και πέρασαν όλοι πολύ όμορφα, τόσο οι μαθητές όσο και εγώ ε, έκαναμε κάτι πολύ διαφορετικό και πολύ ε, πιο ενδιαφέρον από ένα απλό μάθημα. Ε, και νομίζω ότι ήταν μια πολύ όμορφη εμπειρία, τη θυμόταν τα παιδιά και μετά ε, τις επόμενα μαθήματα και ανατρέχαμε στις γνώσεις που έλαβαν εκείνη τη μέρα, ε, λέγοντάς τους θυμάστε το χορευτικό, πώς χορεύσατε, τι κάνατε, ποιοι ήταν τα πρωτόνια, ποιοι ήταν τα ηλεκτρόνια ε, και ένιωσαν όλοι ότι ε, είναι πολύ πιο ενδιαφέρον το μάθημα. Ε, αυτά έχω να σας πω και επίσης θα ήθελα να σας πω ότι ε, και εγώ πέρασα πολύ ωραία και κατά τη διάρκεια που ετοίμαζα το σενάριο ε, γιατί έκανα κάτι πολύ διαφορετικό και πολύ ενδιαφέρον. Ε, ευχαριστώ πολύ. Γεια σας. Ονομάζομαι Περτσινή Βουγκορίνα, είμαι πληροφορικός και η Διευθύντρια του Σχολείου. Φέτος εφάρμοσα και εγώ με δύο εκπαιδευτικά σενάρια ε, το πρόγραμμα Erasmus Plus Creative Steam. Στο πρώτο σενάριο, λοιπόν, έγινε προβολή καταρχάς ενός πίνακα του Πικάσο που είχε δύο μορφές, μία λευκή και μία μαύρη. Αφού συζητήσαμε τον πίνακα και φυσικά αναφερθήκαμε και σε άλλο διάσημο έργο του Πικάσο, την Κουέρνικα, μετά συσχετίσαμε αυτές τις δύο μορφές με τα διαδικά ψηφία, το 0 και το 1, που είναι και η γλώσσα του οικονομιστή, και κατόπιν οι μαθητές περάσανε σε δράση, ε, όπου φτιάξανε μαύρες κόλλες, ε, τις πήρανε μαζί με τις λευκές και σχηματίσανε ε, μία ε, λέξη με ε, αυτά τα διαδικά ψηφία σύμφωνα με τον κώδικα άσκη. Φάνηκαν να το διασκεδάζουν γιατί ενεργοποιηθήκαν και να κατανοούν τις έννοιες αυτές. Κατόπιν, το δεύτερο εκπαιδευτικό σενάριο ήταν βασισμένο σε μία ταινία. Η ταινία που προβλήθηκε είναι, το όνομά τη είναι The Bread and Eye του Ιρανού σκηνοθέτη και οροστάμι την οποία ε, την είδαμε οι μαθητές και τη συζητήσαμε και την αναλύσαμε τόσο κοινωνιολογικά όσο και τεχνικά. Κατόπιν, ε, οι μαθητές φτιάξανε τα δικά τους σενάρια ε, και καταλήξαμε στο να φτιάξουν μία ολιγόλεπτη ταινία γίνοντας ε, οι ίδιοι ε, οι σκηνοθέτες και οι τεχνικοί. Ε, αυτό τους ενθουσίασε ιδιαίτερος γιατί δημιουργήσανε κάτι δικό τους, βγήκαν έξω από την αίθουσα, συνεργαστήκανε και όλα τα μάθανε βιωματικά. Τώρα, ως διευθύντρια είμαι πάρα πολύ χαρούμενη και περήφανη που ε, δημιουργηθήκανε αυτά τα 11 εκπαιδευτικά καινοτόμα σενάρια τα οποία ε, εφαρμοστήκανε στην τάξη ε, και αγγίξανε ε, τόσο τα παιδιά της Δευτέρας, όσο και ε, μαθητές της Τρίτης, γύρω στα 170 παιδιά. Ε, θεωρώ ότι ε, έδωσε πολλά και, στα, και στους μαθητές, αλλά και στους καθηγητές, ε, γιατί και οι καθηγητές ε, αρχίζουν να σκέφτονται με τη μέθοδο αυτή, με τη μέθοδο του Creative Steam, που βασίζεται σε θεατρικές μεθόδους. Ε, είναι ευχής έργο να συνεχίσουμε και τη δεύτερη χρονιά κατά αυτόν τον τρόπο, ε, ίσως να δημιουργήσουμε και άλλα σενάρια, να μας μιμηθούν και άλλοι καθηγητές στο σχολείο μας, όπως επίσης και σε άλλα σχολεία στα οποία θα κάνουμε διάχυση.
So that's it. Thank you very much. Okay. Do you have any comments or questions? Or Corina? And send you the presentations. How can we be involved through the implementation of the methodology in your own context? So we want through this seminar to empower you to also you to, to be able to develop this kind of uh, lesson plans and be able to implement them in your own, in your own context. Okay, do you have any final comments? If not, I remind you that the next uh, session is uh, next um, Monday, the uh, 13th of uh, February, the same time. And uh, in this, the University of Girona will take the lead in order to so you their examples but also uh, will be more practical and you will be involved in the creation of your own lesson plan based on this method so thank you very much and uh, have a nice evening bye I have a nice evening to all thank you thank you very much and congratulations Thank you for your participation today. You are welcome. Good night. Good night. Costa. Mine. Ne. Mine ligaki. Ne. Okay. Δεν έχω κανένα νέο από την Αυστριακή. Ναι, πάτσε. Όχι. Ε, για σήμερα το γιατί τα. Αυτό κάνει να ρημάνει σήμερα. Κάντε να ρημάνει γιατί για μένα. Για σήμερα ή για την πέμπτη. Για αύριο ή για την πέμπτη. Για αύριο, για αύριο. Οκ. Ναι. Οκ, okay, θα το κάνω τώρα. Ε, από την Project Officer του ΙΚΙ πήρα ένα μήνυμα το οποίο στο στήλα για τα νέα προγράμματα. Α, ah, οκ. Okay. Uh, για μια, πώς το λένε, μια ημερίδα ενημερωτική. Ε. Ναι. Ημερίδα ενημερωτική, ναι. Ε, και το έχει σε section. Επίσης, στις 2 του μηνός έχει η μερίδα από τις Βρυξέλλες ε, για το VET. Ναι, για τα kick-off να το έχω δει. Και μάλιστα πρέπει να κάνουμε registration σήμερα και τέτοιο. Και πρέπει να κάνουμε registration. Θέλω να ναι, ναι. Ναι, ναι. Γιατί σήμερα είναι το deadline. Για όχι, όχι, σήμερα το στείλαν. Σήμερα το στείλαν, ναι. Σήμερα είδα κάτι που στείλαν για registration. Ναι, ναι. Εμένα είναι η δεύτερη φορά. Ναι. Ο Γιώργος. Okay. Ναι. Παναγία. Λοιπόν, κλείνω. Ε? Έγινε και εγώ. Έγινε. Γεια σας. Γεια σας.